Hello, everybody. My name is Alex. I'm the co-founder here at Aspect Build. We make a monorepo developer platform based on Bazel. And today, I want to show you a little bit of how to use that platform to develop a Python monorepo that uses Bazel. And what might be new for you if you've looked at Bazel in the past is that in this video, it's going to look really easy to do. And that's really our mission here at Aspect is to make Bazel more approachable for everybody. So to get us started, let me share my screen and I'm gonna walk you through an example application. We're gonna build one from scratch by using the Aspect CLI. So I'll bring up a terminal window and we will get started by uh, going to a new temporary folder just so I keep things tidy. And I'm going to run Aspect init. This is a command that we have pushed in the Aspect CLI. You know, I've, of course, I ran brew install aspect earlier to get this command on my system. You can download the aspect CLI from our GitHub releases. And when I run the init command, it prompts me to follow this wizard to set up a new project. So I'm going to pick a name. How about try Python? I can pick which languages I want. Of course, we're adding more languages to this list all the time. And in a mono repo, you can have many languages. I'm going to use just use Python for this demo. Do I want to set up formatting and linting? Yes, I'll show you how formatting works. We have rough built in. Version stamping, yes, we're going to use that in this demo. Protocol buffers, we're not going to need to see that today. Uh, that would be an interesting topic for another video. Great, so our new project is set up. It says that for next steps, we can CD into this folder that was created or open it in our editor. I'm going to do that with VS Code. And it says, uh, number two, read the developer guide. So it actually wrote a little readme into the repo about how to use Bazel. And of course, that's important because if I share this repo with other folks in my project on my team, they probably don't know Bazel and they don't really want to. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Here we are in a brand new Bazel project. There's a bunch of files here. I'm not going to talk about any of those files because we don't really need to look at them. However, we will start with that readme. So let's look at readme.bazel.md. So it says here we can run formatting. We'll do that later. We can install developer tools. A couple of them are already installed. We're going to use one of those. Um, those live in this tools folder. And then it says how we can work with Python packages. And that's going to be super interesting for us as well. So it says after adding a new import statement in Python code, so on and so forth, we don't have any Python code yet. So let's make a new application. I will start from the root, tell VS Code we want to create something like, let's say, app slash dunder main.py. And of course, I'm naming it that because that's the convention in Python that means this should be an entry point for an application that developers should be able to run. OK, now we need some code in here. And I want to make sure we're using some third party library, but something that's simple enough for a quick demo like this. So let's see, here's how some website says I can use the requests module from Python. So I paste this into my application. Now I want to run it. OK, well, normally uh, in Bazel, you might be used to seeing a lot of steps here. We're going to really pare that down. Uh, let's look at our, um, at our readme again. So it says I should be able to run aspect configure to update a build file. That's the instructions for Bazel. We're not even going to need to look at build files in the first part of this, uh, this little training. So let's open a terminal here and run that command. Now, I got an error because I have not added requests as a dependency. So it says requirements.txt file. I'm not going to add it to that because instead I'm using pyproject.toml, but same idea. So let's add requests. And now, as this readme points out, when it's not already a dependency of the project, I have a couple extra steps to do. This is always true in Bazel, and that's because Bazel wants to be able to manage the dependencies for me. I'm not going to run pip install in this repo. Pip install would set things up on my machine. I would have to create a virtual env in which to work. I'd have to add a readme for my other developers. We're not going to do any of those steps. Bazel is going to do manage the Python interpreter for us. It's going to make sure the request package is downloaded, and it's going to make sure everything is the identical version everywhere so that this is totally reproducible. If I need to 
make a bug fix to this application next month and I do a new build, I'm going to get the same exact behaviors. So the first step is we want to update our pinned requirements file. So we run this command. So of course, you can run um, pip compile, or uh, this is now a feature of UV, which is a pretty cool and fast way to do it. That's going to make sure that we have this requirements lock txt file, which this program has just updated for us. Notice that certify is the first thing here. That's not one of my dependencies. That's a transitive dependency. But I want to have the cryptographic hashes for it so I know that later in a build, all my transitive dependencies are also exactly the same version. And it says it came in via requests, right? So this lock file is, a, is pinning all of our transitive dependencies. Highly recommended to do that under Bazel all the time. The second command is because in Python, things are weird. Let me paste the command. So what happens is a package on PyPy named A could tell you import this as B. You could import B, and that's something provided by package A. Well, that's crazy because that means if we're trying to generate Bazel configurations, we want to tell Bazel the dependency graph. But if we read import B in your code, we don't know that comes from package A. So essentially what this step is doing, unfortunately, it uses a little utility written in Go. You can see here Bazel's taking care of that for us. It just compiled a Go program and it updated this YAML file. So no need to ever look in here. It's managed for you. But it's interesting to see here that this is telling us if we see an import like certify.core, I know it comes from the certify package. So uh, that's going to be enough information for the tooling to take care of the Bazel configuration for us. We are not going to write any build files to get our application running because all we need to do now is run configure again. And this time, all the information it needs is available. It's able to update build files. And if I do a query to see what I just made, let's query app colon all. Great. It says it made us a bin target along with a VN. Internally, it does launch this in a virtual environment. So I can do run, and I should be able to run my program. That's cool. Look, it worked. So however many minutes into the video we are at this point, we've already got a working Bazel set up, and we can run an application that we've written. Just to make it a little bit more fun, let's repeat that process and grab a different package to make our code look better. Obviously, we want people to like the application that we're shipping, and so they would find it nice for it to be cute. So we will have a cow say this instead of just printing it. And again, those steps, pretty quick. I go to my pyproject.toml. I add that I depend on cow say. I could say here like a version range if I wanted to say greater than or equal to something. But in this case, any version of cow say is going to work. Now I need to do my requirements update to pin the transitive dependencies of cow say. And then I need to do my manifest generation so that the configure command will know where that comes from. Now I run aspect configure one more time to update my build file. And finally, I can run the program again. And now a cow says the output of this command. That's pretty cool. Next video, we'll take it to the next step.